for nine Oklahoma Sooners presented today in brilliant high definition by Phillips Televisions. Today, undefeated Air Force, the leading rushing team of the nation, invades Norman, Oklahoma, taking on an experienced Sooner squad, aiming for a national title. A byproduct of last season's injuries, this season we are fielding an experienced team. Experience at quarterback, at receiver, at offensive line, and I have leadership in the huddle. Quarterback Landry Jones has the confidence of his teammates. While junior receiver Ryan Broyles is torched opposing secondaries. And senior DeMarco Murray is the nation's active leader in career touchdowns. The Sooners can score. Air Force has had great success eating up clock and turn. Two undefeated teams set to battle. Air Force storms into Norman to take on ninth-ranked Oklahoma. Exciting college football starts now. Sooners get ready for their 71st consecutive shout-out. And we're going to be watching one of those talented running backs of the country, DeMarco Murray. Welcome to Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions as Air Force hits the road taking on number nine, Oklahoma. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Joel Klatt, and welcome to Norman for a matchup of the Big 12 of the Mountain West Conferences. Two teams, Oklahoma and Air Force, coming off big wins at explosive days offensively last Saturday. And while Oklahoma was at home, they truly dominated Florida State. It was a almost a career day for Landry Jones. Well, and he's had a lot of great days. That's what Coach Stoops told us uh, during the week about Landry Jones. You know, he struggled in the opener, Joel, but he's too good of a quarterback to struggle. He proved that last week against Florida State. Strong arm, very accurate, maybe not as accurate as Sam Bradford, but very good nonetheless. He was very good last week. 380 yards, four touchdown passes against a very fast Florida State defense. They're looking for him to play that well again today against Air Force. Well, the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs last Saturday beat BYU, finally beat BYU yeah. for the first time since 2003 and did absolutely anything they wanted to on the ground. Well, and that's what it's all about for them is running the football. 423 yards a game. That leads the country as far as rushing the football by almost 100 yards over Georgia Tech, who runs it very well. They play very good as far as formations, personnels, screwing with your mind if you're the defense. It starts with the fullback. Jared, too, he's very good there leading rusher he's gonna get that fake right off the bat from Tim Jefferson as Tim Jefferson comes down the line he's got the ability to pitch it or keep it himself Asher Clark on the outside he's fast he's battling an ankle injury this week he's good to go today but if they out leverage you on the outside it can be a very long day Brent Venables the Oklahoma coordinator knows that his Sooners have their work cut out when we come back we'll join Darren Horton in our college football Saturday studio you're watching Big 12 college football Saturday presented by Phillips televisions Wade, welcome inside our Big 12 College Football Saturday studios. I'm Darren Horton in the Big Ten. Some Heisman campaigning. Terrell Pryor, well, he's off to a terrific start. Over 600 total yards, five touchdowns in his first two games. Today, he and the Buckeyes hosting Ohio U. And Pryor just continues to pat the numbers, pulls it down here, shows you what he can do with the legs. Right side, corner of the end zone for the score. Gave the Buckeyes a 17-0 lead at that point. Second quarter. One of his two touchdowns through the area, 245 yards passing, 43-7, the final number two, knocks off Ohio U. UMass to number 22, Michigan in the big house. What would Denard Robinson do today? Well, he hooks up with Daryl Stoneham, who breaks free along the sideline, and he's going 66 yards for the touchdown. The Wolverines right now, they had a little bit of a fight in the early going, but here comes Robinson. He passed for two touchdowns, ran for one. Michigan survives 42-37 the final. Right now, it's time to go to Norman, where the Sooner faithful are on the edge of their seats. It's number nine, Oklahoma, against the number one rushing attack in college football. The kickoff next on Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips Television.
175 countries aboard ships at sea. They are watching today in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. Troy Calhoun knows what it's all about. Air Force Academy graduate back in 1989 and starting a quarterback in 1986 for his former head coach who's here today, Fisher DeBerry. So what an experience for Troy to come back. And he was also stationed here. Part of his service was here in Oklahoma City. As we head downstairs now to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Coach, this has to be a special day. You have broadcast on the American Armed Forces Network. Also, your old coach is here in attendance watching the game. Air Force is celebrating a birthday. What does this all mean to you? Well, I'd say uh, every day is a special day when you get a chance to live in the United States of America. It's because of those men and women all over the world that uh, make moments like this possible. Now talk about Oklahoma. They've won 32 straight home games. How do you beat? How do you beat them on their home turf? Oh, they're a good team. You know what? The Air Force pretty good team too. So uh, it's got a chance to be one heck of a football game. Right, best of luck, Coach. Thank you, Joel. All right, Jim. And he's got a good football team. He's got a team that took apart BYU. But now, how do they adjust the heat, the humidity? Because they usually play at better than a mile high in elevation in Colorado Springs. Yeah, about 7,000 feet there in Colorado Springs. So a lot of them have told us this week, Joel, that, hey, the heat might be bad, yes, here in Oklahoma. But we train at altitude, so we'll be ready. Well, Colorado, our Air Force Academy, rather, won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. So Soderbergh is going to kick it away. DeMarco Murray, Moses Madu, way back deep, and it's going to be Murray from the one. Coming up the right half. Nice laying over to the right side. Good return all the way out to the 40-yard line. So solid field position for Oklahoma. And quarterback Landry Jones coming off a phenomenal effort over Florida State as Cooks made the stop. Landry Jones last week, 30 of 40, 380 yards. And most of it, they turned it off. Most of it came in the first half. And, Joel, you know about rhythm. You know about pace and tempo yeah. because they will go with rhythm. And they're going to come out right out of the gate. That's what you got to essentially, hey, you got to get over that if you're the Air Force Academy and just play football right from the get-go. It'll be Murray over to the left side and met on the outside by Y.Y. Ode, the inside linebacker, a junior from Spring Lake Park, Minnesota, and he makes the stop. As we look now at the starting 11 for Phillips Television, we talked about Landry Jones. Experience over there on the right side for Mensick, and in the backfield, DeMarco Murray. We talked about him. Miller is a true freshman fullback, and they like what they have in their fullback. Now, wide side of the field, and going for the first down is the tight end. That is James Hanna taking it in, the junior from Flower Mound, Texas, and where will they mark it? Just short, just past the 49. Defensively, the experience of the 3 4 alignment, don't forget, is Rick Ricketts. He has led the lineman in stops last year, also in sacks. The Packers, Andre Morris. He was third on the team in stops last year, a three year starter. And they've got experience. Three year starters on the outside Reggie Rembert and Anthony Wright Jr. And they've got the first down on a quick count. It'll be a first down to the 48 of the Air Force Academy. So DeMarco Murray picking it up. In the opening 90 seconds of play in Norman, Oklahoma. They'll keep it on the ground with Murray. Big lane over to the right side. And stumbles his way to the 42 for six. Our keys to the game with Joel Klatt presented by Chrysler. Joel? Well, first of all, you got to start on the defensive side because that's where Air Force is so good. you got to stop Jared to the fullback. Landry Jones, stay hot from last week and no freebies. A lot of times this Air Force offense has people running wide open down the football field. You can't allow that to happen if you're the OU defense. On second and short, AMAC, the inside backer. Guy that they say is very consistent, a junior from Pleasanton, California, and he played in a big high school program at Davis South. It's Murray breaking tackles. He's got a first down on third and short, all the way down to the 26 yard line. Hennessy caught up with him, the senior outside backer. So a steady diet yeah. of DeMarco Murray. Well, you and I talked about it. They've got the size. Well, it's not just a steady diet. It's a fast diet at the line of scrimmage. The tempo of the Oklahoma Sooners, they want to snap the ball about 85 times here today. Senior from Norman, note Moses Madu takes over in the backfield. Little play bank action. Here comes the heat, and there's the sack. On the outside, Patrick Hennessy. He gets to the quarterback very quickly. It's a guy who was out last year, missed all but two games with a shoulder injury. 
Dialed up a good one on that play. Just overloaded that left side of the Oklahoma offense. That's where the play fake was going, Joel. Sometimes you don't have enough blockers, especially when you're trying to get outside of the pocket. It's a reach and run for the uh, uh, offensive line. They weren't able to pick it up. Royals over to the wide side, the top side of the screen. He's their leading receiver. Now, one of the best they've had in recent years at Oklahoma. We're in number 85, a junior from Norman. Let's see if they find him on second and long, second and 19. Underneath, wide open is Kenny Stills, making a miss. He's got a first down inside the 15. True freshman from Southern California from Encinitas around San Diego. Well, they've got some true freshmen. They have some great true freshmen. We saw one last week with Mike Davis at Texas, and Kenny Stills, he is equally as good as Mike Davis at Texas. Finds the hole, gives Landry Jones a frame, first down Sooners. Moving the pocket by design, Landry Jones looking at Stills instead. It'll be a grab by Broyles. He stepped out of bounds. There's a flag on the play, and he may have stepped out of bounds before he made the catch and came back in. Field judge for the flag. And he wasn't forced out, so he steps out on his own. It's going to be illegal touching. Illegal touching. Offense, number 85. Receiver was first to touch the pass after having gone out of bounds. Lost it down at the previous spot. Second down. Got to understand where you're at. Ryan Broyles on the sidelines. There's where he steps out. Not forced out by a defender. If you're forced out, Joel, you can come back into the field to play and be the first to touch the football. But on that play, he is now at least an ineligible receiver, if you will, down the football field. Cameron Kenny up top on the wide side of the field. Coming off one of his best days as the sooner they throw it the other way. It's Stills on second and ten on a loss and down. He's got it down to the six and he's short of the first down by a yard. Really love that route from Kenny Stills because he gave his body and slowed down in the hole versus zone defense. Didn't run through and cover himself up. Give yourself, uh, give the quarterback the frame of your body and Landry Jones accurate enough to get the football on him. From the sixth, third in the yard, Oklahoma started their first four possessions with four touchdowns last Saturday. Trying to duplicate at least the opening drive today. Murray or Megan Madu has got the first down. Powers his way inside the three. So Moses Madu, and he had not had many carries coming in. But after the steady diet they gave to Marco Murray on a very warm, muggy day here in Norman, Oklahoma. See a tan of a tailback, I would imagine. Madu has been just as impressive as Murray in, in fall camp. Madu will get a little counteraction. He's belted and driven back. What a play by Rick Ricketts, the senior from San Jose. And he's the guy, Joel, up front for Air Force. If, if they're going to have some success stopping the run game for Oklahoma, Rick Ricketts is going to have to have a big day. 6'3", 260 pounds, 14 tackles so far on this season. It'll be second and goal outside of the three. Short field to begin with. Don't forget Oklahoma on the nice return by DeMarco Murray. Started at their own 40. Murray back in, and Murray into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. As is the case so many times with Oklahoma, opening up with a touchdown drive. The tempo, they overwhelm you. They've got great size and athleticism up front. And that tempo just wears you down. Air Force was trying to do their best to bow their neck, unable to do it. Jimmy Stevens in. Patrick O'Hara, the sophomore from Topeka, injured in pregame warm-up. So Jimmy Stevens, who's kicked before, in for the point after, and it's a beauty. I watched Jimmy yesterday in practice, and especially punting the football. If they need somebody to back up Tressway and Tressway, all Big 12 performer potentially. Well, Stevens can do that as well. So nice to have an insurance policy. What a dominating effort to start by Oklahoma. Overpowering Air Force early. In Oklahoma City, we're about a 30 minute drive, Taker. And we are celebrating the 63rd anniversary of the Air Force. Today is the exact date it was formed. Back in 1947, Joel Myers, Joel Glad, Jim Knox, back in Norman, Oklahoma. One of the great atmospheres, one of the great environments. Talked about it a little bit last week when we were in Austin. Big 12 college football, great sights. And when you go to Austin, Texas, here in Norman, Oklahoma, throw Texas A&M in there as sure, well. College Station. That's on your must-see list.
when going to different college football venues. You, you got to include maybe even some others. You know, Lincoln is a great environment great to play place. a football game. Boulder, even though they're not playing very good right now, they, that's a great place to watch a football game. Uh, really, all the venues, and everybody gets it. They do a great job on game day. John Warzika going back with Cody Getz, and Tress Way handles the kickoffs anyway. It's not O'Hara. That is Getz over the far side. Warzika home run thread over to the near side. And Way will kick it. Warzika coming up on the run. The 10 with some momentum. Looking for a lane. And he's got a good return across the 25 as Warzika is pounded down at the Air Force 28. And for the Air Force Academy, a dual threat, a guy who could throw the ball better than quarterbacks that they have had recently in the past. And that is Tim Jefferson, the junior from Atlanta. Out of his 20 starts. A 14 and 6 career record. And if you're thinking about playing catch up, well, last year's best passing day was 161 yards against Houston in their bowl game at a very high percentage, 10 of 14. Right now, early catch up for Jefferson with Azure Clark and Jared Two in their option I formation. Now they bring Holderman into the backfield. Jefferson in trouble and on his way down. Making the stop. It was David King, the sophomore from Houston. Our Phillips Television's starting 11. We saw Jefferson. A.J. Wallerstein, experience over on the right side, the junior from Candry Canyon Country, California, in the Los Angeles area. Clark and two, we'll talk about them a lot. Warzika, big average when he runs the football. And in the action, nothing doing for Jefferson. Two at the most, up to the 31. Stacy McGee driving him down the sophomore, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Now defensively, for the Sooners ready for the hurry up, and so are we. Quicker than offense is both of them. Field over on the left side, second team all conference last year. The experience of Travis Lewis, and, and then in the secondary, don't forget Fleming and Hurst already with picks this year. Fleming's got two over the first two games, making it his first season as a starter. It'll be third down at about eight. Grab is made and a first down, taking it in for the Air Force Academy. And a big grab on third down to keep Oklahoma off the field. Zach Kaut, the wide receiver at 6'4", a junior from Dayton. This is not what they want to do is throw the football, but Jefferson, nice drop back. Again, finding that zone. Kaut finds it, settles down, gives him the frame, ends up getting a first down. they got to stay on schedule better on first and second, though, in order to have success today. Where's he the motion, man? Jefferson's got a lane. A good yardage for Jefferson. Out of bounds with the flag on the play. As he gets about seven, almost eight. Now our Chrysler keys to the game. Holding offense, number 67. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Call it on Jordan Eason. Sophomore guard out of Smithfield, Virginia. Back to our Chrysler Keys for Air Force. Well, for Air Force, you got to spread it around offensively. Warzika, Clark, too, Vogler, they all got to get touches. They've got to be successful today. You got to take shots down the football field as well. This is going to be very important for them to try to uh, essentially get in the minds of Oklahoma and then limit the Oklahoma possessions by this running offense. 423 yards per game. Limit those uh, possessions for Landry Jones and he could have a chance. Coming into the game, Jared to the fullback is the leading rusher. Gonna be Jefferson. Nice toss. Big hole, Rosica. Off to the races he goes. Across the midfield stride. And a first down inside Oklahoma territory, close to the 30. Forced out by Quentin Carter. He only averaged 11 a carry coming in on plays like that. What a terrific block on the outside. I believe that that was Asher Clark, the tailback, who's gonna lead this play out on the outside. Good pitch off of Jeremy Beal, the defensive end. And then here we go. That's the block on the outside. This is the key block that springs you on the outside. Not very good discipline by Oklahoma. Not as many guys out there that need to be. Too many guys paying attention to the fullback. That's Brad Venables, the defensive coordinator. And throwing is Jefferson, waiting for his man to cross, and he's got him. Kauf again. A first down at the Oklahoma 10. Patience by Jefferson. Great patience and terrific blocking up front for Air Force's offensive line. You would think that that's where they would have trouble with the more athletic Oklahoma front. But when you're 
Constantly Phil trying to look in the backfield and see what's going on. You don't play quite as fast. That's what happened to the defensive line on the last play. It's a first and goal. Air Force has it and owes the football across the 10. How tight is this formation? <laughs> got Alder and three in the backfield. Run it over to the right side. And Clark can't get out of the grasp of the man going down. And that was Jonathan Nelson who slowed him down. Tony Jefferson cleaned up. Hurst as well did a great job. The offensive line forever. This is what I was just saying. Averaging 6'3", 252 pounds. That, that's an offensive line from 30 years ago. Not, not today. This, they've got to get low. They've got to get into the legs of Oklahoma in order to get them off the line of scrimmage. Clark on the quick toss sweep. Not much blocking, but he still gets five. A quick six. They are real up-tempo, yeah. and you talk about the size of the offensive line. They're quick guys. Well, and they're precise in what they do. They, they are very disciplined, and those guys up front for Air Force, what they do, Brent Venables told us, the uh, defensive coordinator of Oklahoma, they get into the legs of the offensive line. They're not just up there fighting up top in a strength war. They get down, they get dirty down low, and they do a great job. Started back at the Air Force 28. It's going to be two of the fullback. He just tries to blast it in. He stops shy by two yards, just outside of the two, and a field goal try coming up for the Air Force Academy. But give them credit. They're, they're set way back off schedule, snap-wise, because yeah. of the penalty, and they get it back with the throws downfield. Well, a couple of uh, nice pass plays from Tim Jefferson to Cloud down the football field. Air Force doing a nice job on third down, converting a couple of times, and now with an uh, opportunity to put points on the board. It'll be like an extra point, a 20-yard field goal attempt for Soderbergh. And on its way, points on the board. So early, Air Force responds with 5.34 left in the opening 15 minutes of play after the quick 60-yard drive of the Oklahoma Sooners. Air Force has an answer. I love guacamole. <laughs> I, I love avocados. I could use a couple of, up in the booth right now. Joel, we were at the practice yesterday for the Oklahoma Sooners, and I say practice because it's not a walkthrough for no. those guys. They yeah. take it seriously, and boy, do they try to get ready for something they don't normally see, which is an attack like Air Force, and Air Force is effective. They, they absolutely were effective, and they didn't care if they had a negative play or even got stopped for no game. They just came back, lined it up, and came right back at the Sooners. Loved that scoring drive, and it was a good answer after OU went right down the field on their first drive. Moses Badu. Back deep, along with Cameron Kinney. And the short one right over the head of Kinney, who will get it off the deflection off the hand of Badu. And he'll be down in a hurry. What great field position defensively now for Air Force. So the squib, because they didn't kick it deep the last time with Soderberg. And now it paid off. A hot one to handle, a bad hopper for Oklahoma and Kenny. And Oklahoma is going to have it back at their own 10 yard line. Well, they don't make you comfortable at all no. in any area of the game. That's one of the things that the Oklahoma coaches kept emphasizing to us. They're the most difficult team to prepare for in the country, both because of their offense and what they're able to do defensively and in the special teams. They're going to spread things out deep in their own territory. It'll be Murray, and Murray's not going anywhere. Shut down completely. Making the play, Y.Y. Ole, the inside backer, as we reminded, the first 10 line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. So Y.Y. Ole on the stop after he was slowed down. It's a loss of two. It'll be second and 12 back at the eight. Jones looking on the slant that was taken away, and he's going down. So you look at the quick slant over to the left side. That was gone. A, a young quarterback and an inexperienced 
quarterback would have thrown that ball. But you look at what Air Force is dealing with. Their defensive line averages 6'3", 261. That's 40 pounds and two inches on the average man on the off uh, offensive line for Oklahoma. That, I mean, that is quite a discrepancy. But they're playing well, and it starts with Rick Ricketts, number 90. He is a nasty player. He gets after it. Great motor down low. It's a 3-4 lineman, don't forget. Here comes the Heat. Landry Jones gets it away for Kenny and overshoots him. Good coverage on that side of the field. Josh Hall, one of the nickelbacks in there. So they had Kenny all turned around. But I bring up the 3-4. Now, a lot of teams go to a 3-4. Yeah. Eventually, they don't start in a 3-4, but Air Force starts in it, and you don't see it that much. Well, it's tough on base down because you don't see it on base down that much. But in nickel situations, Joe, you're going to see that in the Big 12. But this is exactly what Air Force wants, limiting your possessions and empty possession for OU. And now Air Force is going to have a chance to go down and take the lead. Tress Way, phenomenal his first two games. John Davis. Is back deep along with Reggie Rempert. Line drive. And put on the ground by Davis. He gathers it in. A lucky hop. Right back to Rempert Bacon, the return man. So they'll have it way back inside the 40. It's still a four point lead for Oklahoma. Jefferson off of some play action, finds Kauth down the football field, leading to a Soderberg field goal. Bob Stoops knew he was in for a tough one. In taking periods and blocks of time to work all of the different triple options, all the different formations in that style of offense, it's not something you see uh, very often at all, and uh, we won't see it the rest of the year. So it is a, it is a major challenge. Difficult proposition because you don't see it, and they use some practice time even in August yeah. before their first two games just to work on the option very rare I mean teams like they don't even prepare for Oklahoma early but they did for Air, Air Force because of the unique nature to this offense single to the backfield for Jefferson and a three wide receiver set but they'll run Jefferson out of the wing and he gets about four. It doesn't look like much, but four or five, and they're on schedule as he's brought down by a redshirt freshman out of San Antonio's New Braunfels, and that's Tim Wart. That's the tough part about it. Wart does everything right, stays on his key, gets the tackle, but they gain four yards, and they're in a perfect position to run their offense. Get up to the line in a hurry. It'll be second and six. But it's not a hurry up, but as their coaches told us earlier in the week, they're usually off by 10, still on the clock. And that is the case once again, just about 10 on the clock on the snap. Two powers his way across the 45 to the 46. So four and four, and now can they get two more? Jared to the fullback, the leading ground gainer coming in, a senior from Park City, Utah. It's only the fourth possession of the game. Air Force is second. OU has had two, and there's only about three minutes left in the first. That's what I'm talking about, limiting the possessions of Oklahoma. That's what Air Force does such a great job of, eating up clock and eating up yards. The run wars Zika into the backfield. Into the clock, he's got a nice hole. He's into the secondary and barely tripped up with a first down across the midfield strike. So there are so many little wrinkles yeah. to these sets. In the motion and the different sets, that's what they talked about, eye control for Oklahoma. You see the great blocking up front, creating the seam. Clark gets it done. I don't see anything from Clark's right ankle. Beal is having a hard time with Art on the outside. Beal is supposed to, you know, he's supposed to be kind of an all-league type player, but this low, small, quick offensive line is giving him trouble. Alderman once again, the motion man. And the goal on the reverse. Outside it goes, Hunter. And they stayed at home, did they, on that play? Strong safety, Jonathan Nelson drives him back. No gain on a little option in reverse. Kel Hunter scored on this play a week ago. The reverse, they're running the option, they're running the option, and they try to get you on that misdirection. Flip it to Hunter as he's coming around from his wide receiver position back to the right. But a good job staying home and being disciplined by OU. Well, the second and long, Jefferson two of two to start. Both going to count. Call wide receiver. To the fullback. 
He just slides between his tackle and guard for about four. Give him five, actually, up to the 45. So third down in Oklahoma territory. You talked about, and Kevin Wilson talked about it, the offensive coordinator of Oklahoma. Uh, they minimize your possessions. Yep. So there's, uh, you magnify everything you do offensively because normally Oklahoma gets a lot of possessions. If they get four to five and a half, they'll be fortunate. Well, they wanted those 80 to 85 snaps. And they're not going to get that today. I can guarantee you that. It'll be third, a little more than six. Right side, blocking out in front, and another first down for Air Force. Boy, they make it look easy, don't they? Or they Zika again. They sure do, and they run the same play to the opposite side that they got the great third down conversion or the long conversion on in the first drive, allowing Clark to get out in front from his tailback position. This is what De Jefferson does a great job of, forcing the edge, pitching it outside, creating outside leverage on the defense. Bob Stoops cannot be happy with what he's seeing from his defense right now. There's down Air Force, Oklahoma 33. The play action, deception going down the middle, looking for his wide out, and batted away at the last second from Volger. Well timed by Jamel Fleming. Vogler 6'5", 215. He's a big wide receiver, slow to get up right now in the end zone. Came down very awkwardly, possibly on his left shoulder. Could have just gotten the wind knocked out of him, but this is what they want to do, take shots down the field. A couple of play-action fakes, stand in the pocket. Jefferson does a nice job standing in the, in the pocket in the face of pressure and delivers a great football down the field in the perfect spot and Fogler is just unable to come down with it but you see him land a little awkwardly on that left side hopefully he's okay because he's there down the field threat he's who they want to go down the field to in order to keep this Oklahoma defense off of their front five you know off of their front offensive line get them backed off so that you can continue to run that option so right now Air Force giving Oklahoma everything they want early in this game don't forget since Bob Stoops took over Oklahoma is 68 and 2 That's on their home field. That is amazing. It's hard to believe. Cody Getz lines up at the backfield. Along with Jefferson, Ron Halderman, and Getz is going nowhere. On second and long, spins for two. It'll be down to the 31. Brought down by David King. Very athletic end. But unfortunately, Oklahoma has a young man down, Travis Lewis, who's heart and soul to their defense, the weak side backer. First team all Big 12 performer last year. Looking at that left leg, you hope it's just the, an impact of a helmet, but you know, and they have a hard time getting up, you'd, you'd hate to have, have Lewis go down for an extended period of time. He's such a great leader for this team vocally on defense, not only for the defense, but really for the whole team. You're facing a speed offense, as you mentioned, the vocal leader, and one of their best players out of their 11 defensively for Bob Stoops. Yeah, I can't seem to shut my mouth, and it gets me in trouble sometimes. Or, you know, it's it's kind of good with the position I play. I, li I like to talk a lot of trash and everything, but sometimes it can get me in trouble because I get in these battles with my position coach, and you know, he won't let me win. Can't afford to lose him. No. Nope. And he hobbles off, but fortunately, on his own. Brought up in the conversation last year for Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. He has 39 and a half tackles for loss coming into this game in his career. An outstanding football player, an all-league per performer, and a guy who understands this defense. And now you're sitting there with a redshirt freshman, Tom Ward, and Mike Linebacker trying to orchestrate this defense versus the very tough to decipher Air Force offense. Bringing Corey Nelson in his stead, Jefferson. Fakes it, dumps it. Wazika can't make a miss. What a play by the freshman on a shooter Vista, California, Tony Jefferson, who started the opener when they opened in a nickel. And people were raving. All the coaching staff, both sides were raving about Tony Jefferson, the true freshman. I was very excited to come out here and watch him play. Throws his body around, nose for the football. They love this kid. And you know what they said in the future? Superstar written all over this kid. Very impressive start. Falcons aren't intimidated at all, are they? All. Down by four. We'll come back. That's the end of the first quarter as you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented 
by Phillips Televisions. With a slight breeze at his back for Eric Soderberg, who was second team All Mountain West Conference last year. He had a long of 50 yards last season. This is actually going to be a 49 yard attempt. He's already got a 20 yarder, but now can he make it a one point game with the final snap of the first quarter? It's on its way, and he's blocked it out to the right. Plenty of distance, wrong direction, never got it to draw. So missed. 49-yard field goal by Soderberg, and at the end of the 15 minutes of play, it's official now with a, another flyby from Tanker Air Force <laughs> Base. First quarter is complete, 7-3. Oklahoma, the number nine team of the nation, up by four. <laughs> Ridden down from behind by Rick Ricketts. So from the 32, maybe a yard to the 33, Ricketts on top of the situation again. So we head down to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Okay, Joel, Travis Lewis should be okay. Took a real hard hit in the shin. They taped it up, really taped it up heavily. He'll be back on the field, guys. All right, Knox. Thank you, Jim. Second and nine. Landry Jones looking up at the middle, little pop. And put on the ground, they'll say incomplete. Out of the hands of DeMarco Murray of Phillips Television Game Break Time as we go to Darren Horton. Darren? Joel in Seattle, Nebraska freshman Taylor Martinez with two touchdowns, but here comes the Huskies Heisman candidate, Jake Locker, seven yards on the ground for the touchdown right now, 14-7, Nebraska with the lead. Joel? All right, Darren had a feeling it was going to be a shootout going in along Lake Washington. It'll be a big third down coming up now for Landry Jones. Setting up the screen. Blocking's not there at all. Icard, the redshirt freshman from Oklahoma City, couldn't get over there. Lindsey was, though. For Air Force, three and out for the second consecutive time for the Sooners. They really like Brian Lindsey. 6'1", 210 pounds. A very steady player, downhill type of player. And you saw it on that last play. Does a sensational job of covering that outside alley, getting up, and is a sure tackler. Tressway in to punt it away once again. Reggie Rembert back deep, along with John Davis. No pressure on the punter. And Way bombs out of beauty. It'll be Rembert holding on this time to the 19. Good coverage downfield, though. So Oklahoma gets down there real early. Special teams coverage, Ronnell Lewis. Falcons have it back. And he leads the Air Force Academy in rushing so far this season. Bangs his way out for nine, almost ten, the senior from Park City. The last thing that you want is the fullback to get going in the option offense because that means you got to start allowing your nickel back. You see Tony Jefferson right there start squeezing down the outside is going to open up. Quick toss on the outside. Halderman. Boy, what rhythm. You talked about it. I think the key was the word you said, precise, the way they do things. Very precise. They understand what they're trying to do. They're very good at getting in and out of different personnel groups as well as formations. And Asher Clark, who's a terrific terrific running back for this team, has been out on the lead block for guys like Warzika a couple of different times. Another terrific block on Tony Jefferson on the outside. We're going to be joined by somebody who knows all about the option with just a little bit of former center head coach. Right now, though, the Falcons on second and about five. Again, fullback gets the first down, hammers it. Ward finally drives him down. Middle linebacker, but Jared, too. Positive yardage again. The 28, Travis Lewis for OU is going to come out of the ball game right now. That shin is just not where it needs to be, especially from his will linebacker position. That's a, that's a guy that's going to be responsible for those A and B gaps, and you can tell right now he's not where he needs to be. Sooners short a man defensively as they run real quickly out there. Corey Nelson. Timeout. Oklahoma, their first of the half. A little bit too late, though. So Brent Venables and the Sooners needed to use the first half timeout. Two and a half minutes gone by, and we'll be right back to Norman. But the Sooners up by four.
Strike one. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! One for Coach Switzer, Joe Washington. Running it in there. How about Dewey? Leroy Selman. Good reason to celebrate. Great days here in Norman, Oklahoma. They continue now under Bob Stoops, but from 1973 to 1988, they were under the guidance of Barry Switzer, and they were strong days, Coach. Hey, we, we had a lot of good players. We had good coaches <laughs> and good players, and uh, we had a lot of fun. We had a great run. Yeah, great you had run. a great run, and, and last night you had a celebration here, and so many of the guys made it back for we you. We had 90 back here. Joe Washington, who's a great player on both those teams, uh, he organized it. He works for the university. It was last night, and we had 90 guys back. It was really, really a wonderful evening. We had a lot of fun. Now, the, the stories at events like that. I know when I get around some of the guys that I've played with, they just, you sit down and you just tell story after t right. story. How was that night? Dredges ago? up, you know, reunions reun <laughs> bring back reflections. That's right. And, and it's what it does. It's what it's all about. And we had a wonderful time. I love what they do on offense. They've had the ball from 940 Air Force. And that's what yeah. wishbone teams do to you. They, you know they it well. the ball and uh, eat the clock up. And these, this bunch here, you know, doesn't have a guy that probably could start for Oklahoma. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. right. But they right. make better great points so i bet you most of them i'm glad you said it <laughs> well, we couldn't get, we could get, get away with that <laughs> well I, I understand that but uh, i can't i don't work for college president or for reasons <laughs> 12 big a titles including the two teams who were here last night 74 75 sooners is it second and long and i want to get back to that conversation about your offense and, and the wishbone attack as we continue with former head coach barry swift here and that'll give us time to talk about it the, the fall start over to the right side you had great talent, oh, obviously, but oh, you had to be precise. You had to be clean. What are the keys? Why is Air Force so good at what they do? Well, they, so a lot of them, they do a misdirection. They're run, using a triple option principle in their three back offense, but they use so much misdirection, opposite direction. Uh, it, it's it's really confusing the defense. You can see Oklahoma has not seen anything like this, and there's a, a confusion and communication on defense, and they have some success. Oklahoma can run fast on defense. They got great quickness and speed. They'll close, but they can't practice this stuff against the scout teams. I promise you. Well, we watched it. Yeah, we watched it yesterday, Look, just and, right and to be able right to there. simulate it yeah. by a scout team, it's impossible. No, you don't. And. Uh, it's great offense. It's not dead, and the academies keep it alive. Yep, I promise absolutely. you. Maybe well, some of the coaches are dead, but they coached it. There's no <laughs> disciples of it. Everybody wants to hire people from throwing the game, the bogus, throw the ball, and spread offenses. How about the the offensive line play? This resembles what you guys well, did no back in the middle, you know, low, low, eye in the thigh type of deal. Fear blocking, down blocking, creating, get, sealing the inside, and taking the ball to the corner and executing. And, but they're multiple offense. So they're in the spread offense now, one back set. The back stays in, picks up the blitz. The guy's got a strong arm and hit the first great slant route he threw today. Great throw. Sure. Great. Hey, this is Halderman there. We're talking to head coach Barry Switzer, and I'll keep calling him a head coach because he had such great championship teams here at Oklahoma. And for all of us that were in the big eight at the time, all of us a love from other like schools. They're, they're we cool. suffered at the hands of the Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah. And now, look at this Air Force. Will they gamble? Could be a pooch game. And sure. a timeout is going to be called. Like timeout. Oklahoma. They're second of the half. Maybe a timeout. But well, we're going to take a timeout as well. So we'll come right back with Coach Barry Switzer. Talk about, and especially the differences between college football as opposed to when he called it quits in 88 here at Oklahoma. Be back with Darren Horton in our Saturday studio. Uh, offense of the 90s when he went 60 and 3. Billy Vessels here. Uh, this is this bunch uh, Bud had. They had a great run, great bats, won 47 in a row, running a, tr a triple option type offense. Not the blocking schemes, but basically the dive back quarterback keeper pitch. And uh, same same principles, but except it evolved to the wishbone, and which is a great blocking screen. It is going to be a punt coming up for the Air Force Academy after they deliberated. Sooners will stay away from it, and they'll get it on a good roll for Air Force as the Sooners will get it back at their own 16. We were talking while we were away as well about the differences in college football today, yeah. the spread offenses in college football. Everybody wants it in two minutes or less. You guys were willing to take your time yeah. because you could beat them on the perimeter with the right quarterback. You bet. And it, it, we make people play disciplined defense. You can't you run the eye formation. You don't run the option game. And everybody gangs up at the point of attack. Quarterback, safety, linebackers, everybody comes where the eye back is. 
But when you run the op triple option, you don't gang up when you stick the ball in the fullback's belly. You better play who's got the quarterback, who's got the pitch, and uh, play disciplined football. They're out of the gun here, Coach Landry Jones, with a single to the backfield. Oklahoma back of their own 16. This guy's a good quarterback. He's got a gun, doesn't he? He has quick delivery. He's got great ball velocity. That's he's Kenny Stills, the freshman out of Southern California on the receiving end. I, I, I like his feet, Coach. You, you know, when, you, when you're talking athlete. about great great quarterbacks, I think Josh Heupel deserves more credit for getting these quarterbacks at OU ready, especially with their feet. Well, a little swing works, and Royals takes a hit, but he gets the first down. Timing important on that play. You bet. See, this guy's got quick release, quick delivery. It's a uh, prototype, and uh, he has got great feet. You know, he's, what, 6'6", six, no, six, six, uh, smart. He is a really good player. He's going to be a first-round pick. Man, he's got Kenny wide open. Cameron Kenny coming off his best game as a Sooner takes it inside the 45 to the 42. So back-to-back -back first downs. And as we look at this, Joel, this is a long time coming. First first down since the first five minutes of the game for the Sooners. This is what you do. You, the two defenders, a mistake and a missed assignment for Air Force. They run up, try to cover the flat, and you kill them in the seam deep. But here's the tempo of OU back on the ball. And there's Royals uncovered again, making a miss on the perimeter and diving. Staying in bounds with the first down inside the 30. So there's Ryan Broyles, and he has a chance to be one of the great receivers in Sooner history. He's another first round pick. This is a playmaker. This is the biggest playmaker they got. Get the balls in his ball in his hand, and uh, he will make things happen. He's uh, better. He's I think a little bit better than Clayton, Mark Clayton, who's a great player here, first round pick. But it's very similar. But uh, special player. He's now fifth all time on the Sooners receiving list. And, and a timeout has been called. Barry, we can't thank you enough for coming across the stadium That's right. and joining That's us right. up here in the press well, box. I appreciate it, guys. Good luck to you. Thank See you. you guys. Stay after. <laughs> great, talk will. You guys, great talk to you guys. Barry Switzer, Oklahoma's legend. As we'll be right back to Norman. His target, Mikel Hunter. No, our best of the family of Don Smith who passed away a friend of college football Saturday and our best of Don Smith his sons were on our local crew here two of his sons former PR director of the New York Giants uh, gentleman made his home at Oklahoma City so our thoughts are with the family of Don Smith this entire week now it's going to be third and ten from the 49 Put on the ground and off the fingertips of Ashley Clark. So out of rhythm completely once it was dropped by Jefferson. Carter in the coverage. And a good thing, Ashley Clark went down. Yeah, because Carter was right there. And this guy, <laughs> this guy is a physical specimen. This is exactly what Air Force doesn't want to happen. They get off schedule, but they're going to pooch this ball again and not allow DeMarco Murray or Ryan Boyles to get back there and receive a punt. Great strategy. Going to be pinned Look inside this. the 10-yard line. Boy, has Jefferson got it down? A little end over ender. <laughs> a great rugby player, that isn't was, he? <laughs> I wish I could bump and run my wedge around <laughs> my, my nine That's iron right. or eight iron around the green That's like that. Right. So Jefferson gets it done. Back inside the 10. Oklahoma is going to have it at the 7. So Air Force keeping them kind of at bay right well, now. Well, not only do you not allow uh, allow Broyles or Murray to go down, down down there and receive a punt, but you're going to put a frustrated offense. You've had some false starts. Landry Jones has overthrown his last three wide receivers, and you're putting them inside the 10-yard line, which is a stressful environment. Great strategy by Troy Calhoun and the Falcons. Deep single set for DeMarco Murray. Man, looked like an offside. No flag, though. Murray barely tripped up. Boy, over the nose on the center. Looked like an early jump by Air Force. Still five for DeMarco Murray. It's a quick group. We talked about it. Give him six on that first down carry. These cadets will not go anywhere. Uh, and keeping them at bay. Despite the fact they're down by seven, they've outgained him and meeting him on the edge. It was the safety, John Davis, the junior from Cincinnati, with a pretty good lick. I believe that Oklahoma, at some points, actually, they go too fast for their own good because the execution starts to slow down and, and wear off. Rather than sometimes taking your time and allowing those big offensive linemen to get their hats where, they're, where they need to be, especially on the outside. They'll run the fullback. Miller in motion. Need two for Murray. And Murray struggles. 
He may be short of the first down marker, just outside of the 16, needed to go across the 17. It may be another three and out. One thing that we have found, the, the guys are fearless on the Air Force Academy. No question about it. They're, they don't, you bring anybody else into this environment, and you might get some wide eyes, you might get some guys that are in awe of the University of Oklahoma and their football program, but these cadets, they got bigger and more important things the in the picture, future. Right, that's the big right. picture. Perspective, and that's what these kids have, and they play like it, and that's what's so impressive. It's easy to get behind and to start to like and root for the Air Force Falcons, not only because of what they're going to do after football, but they play such a great brand of football as well. Oklahoma's got it by an inch. Joel, what you're seeing right now is the product of a quarterback that the coaches don't want to put back there and throw the football. Everybody for Air Force in the box. Only one safety deep. Eight men at the line of scrimmage. Very tough to block all those eight guys. And that's why you're seeing DeMarco Murray struggle for yardage at the point of attack. And Troy Calhoun, who was just on the sideline, they swing it out real quickly. The Royals makes a miss. Good move down the sideline and then takes a hit as he's popped out of bounds by Miller. Impressed with the youngster on the outside, number four, Kenny Stills, true freshman from California, gets the cornerback. I believe that that's Reggie Rimpert, Rimpert, Rimpert on the uh, on the outside. There's Stills. No, I'm sorry, that's Anthony Wright Jr. See that block? Just slowing up the pursuit of Wright Jr. is enough for Madhu to get outside. It'll be second and nine. Landry Jones or second and one. Landry Jones finding DeMarco Murray. Murray. Pushed out by Davis, has the first down. Well, Troy Calhoun, who we saw on the sideline, the head coach, when he was stationed here at an Air Force base in, outside of Oklahoma City, he called the Sooner office. It was 90, 91, and 92, and he volunteered his time, and he broke down footage for the staff, for Gary Gibbs coaching staff. So he knows about the tradition, and he's familiar with bringing a team in here and how difficult it can be. Out of the hands of Kenny. He's trying to make his move on Rembert before he had the football. Uncharacteristic of a guy who the coaches have been telling us has been playing his most consistent football. The junior college wide receiver, now a senior out of Georgia, 6'1", 193 pounds. He's been doing a nice job. Took his eye off that last one. It'll be second and 10 from the 31. Quick jump and an offside. Three down for Broyles and pretty nice pick. Pretty good boots. He's got a first down. They'll decline the penalty. It was a jump on the near side, offside Air Force. And a first down to the 45 of the Sooners. Offside, defense, number 49. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Right defensive end for Air Force. He's going to jump off sides on the hard count from Landry Jones. I don't mind that at all when you're in your own territory. You try to get some free yardage, especially when you're behind the chains in second and ten. That yeah, was Caleb Koneman, former outside linebacker. Ton of time for Landry Jones. And it's Rattery, the tight end, taking it in for his short game. So now we have a minute to play. It's out of bounds, which saves the timeout. Oklahoma still with timeouts on the board. And they're up by seven, so plenty of time. Plenty of time, especially for an up-tempo offense like OU. Jones and for grabs and almost brought down by Stills. He threw it only into triple coverage. I'll tell you, Landry is off right now. Yeah, he, that's a break. Mentally, he's got to be frustrated. His feet are never set. Stills is just gobbled up by all the defenders. 31 for Air Force. That's Brian Lindsay, the strong safety. He had his hands on the football. John Davis had his shots at it. Rimbert has his shots at it. Stills was able to play a little bit of defense there and get the ball on the ground. It's third and four. It should have been a pick for Lindsay. Only need for it. Boys. Make it a miss. Uses the sideline to save a timeout again. Boy, is that experience. Player. Smart player. He's only a junior. Came in with 21 receptions, and he shows you that he's not only flashy and he's not only a guy that can get the ball in the end zone, but he's a smart football player. I love this as a quarterback. Throw it to him in the middle, and what does he do? He looks for the chains and then the sidelines right away. And it's going to stop anyway, but it's going to restart after the movement of the chains. One timeout left for Oklahoma, still up by seven. 
This drive started back of their own seven. Here comes the blitz. And it'll be out of the reach of Stills. That didn't have a chance. So it'll be second and ten. Still 39 seconds left, and we remind you. And we just saw a good look. Jimmy Stevens hit that 32-yard field goal, but it is the backup place kicker for the Sooners today. O'Hara injured in pregame warmups, and Jimmy Stevens has taken over. They are working with the wind here, so they don't necessarily have to get as deep as they would going the other direction. A pretty good stiff breeze at the back of the Sooners. Bad snap by Hayburn. Now, Landry Jones trying to throw it away. He does. And he's still in the pocket in, that, in the tackle be box. Yeah, yeah. it should be, be a flag. Called. Not only was he in the tackle box, but he was in the arms of a defender. The ball did not get past the line of scrimmage, the original yep. line, and there's the flag. Intentional grounding. Offense, number 12. Lost it down at the ball to foul. Third down. That's Hayburn, who's snapping the football back. And didn't, that's rare. He's that good. It was a ground ball. Jones didn't even have a chance, but at that time, you just cover up the football and take the sack rather than also taking that loss of down that they've got. So now it's third and long. If I'm Air Force, I, I, they're in prevent. I don't necessarily like this. I'll dial up a pressure and force them to throw hot, rally up, and make the tackle. Three man rush. And Jones moving the pocket. And I believe you can. It would have been out of bounds had he caught it anyway, and a punt coming up. And again, high. Uh, Jones off the mark once again, not getting his shoulders set. But a lot of passes have sailed on him. Uh, he's not balanced. He, he's not in rhythm. He doesn't feel comfortable. He's frustrated, and that's what happens as a quarterback. Landry's got to calm himself down at halftime and come out here and try to play a more efficient half of football. And that's going to be Josh Heupel's job standing next to him. Trying to coach him up, the quarterback coach for OU. This is going to be, believe it or not, the fourth punt of the first half for Tressway out of six Oklahoma possessions. So give credit to the Falcons of the Air Force Academy. They won't even put Davis back deep. It'll be over his head and into the end zone. So Air Force, one time out on the board. I think they're, you got to believe they'll be content with 18 seconds left to go to the locker room down by seven. If OU's quick strike, I don't know exactly what to call Air Force. I, methodical, I guess, is the best word. But, yeah, this is going to be... At, at, at most, a handoff to Jared to the fullback, probably just a knee by Tim Jefferson. So, yardage at this point, almost identical. 171 total yards for Air Force to 170 for the ninth-ranked team of the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners. And Oklahoma has not been able to run the football. Only 31 yards on the ground, a knee, and that'll do it. So, like we've said, they hang in there with everybody and continue to give themselves a chance. And that's the kind of the theme of Air Force Academy under Troy Calhoun, a very successful program in their fourth year under a former Falcon. Got to reset if you're Landry Jones. You're frustrated, I get it, but you've got to reset now going into the locker room. Get yourself some water, get yourself some Gatorade. Settle yourself down because you got to play better in the second half. Downstairs we go. Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, a defensive game here. You, you got to be pleased with your defense holding the Air Force offense to just three points. Uh, we have played really well on uh, defense. Uh, offensively, we've just been terribly inconsistent. You know, this poor execution. How do you get a jump start in the second half, Coach? Well, again, these guys just got to settle in, uh, have some execution, not have some dump penalties or miss snap here that gives you, you know, that puts you back in the hole. It just gets down to executing properly. Right, thanks for the time. Have time in Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma leading Air Force 10 to 3. As we found out before, they don't beat themselves. And right now, Oklahoma is making plenty of mistakes to help out. Well, in the first half, when you look at what happened, Air Force got it started with a great first drive. A lot of good execution, especially on the outside. Jonathan Warzika got it started on the outside with a great block from Asher Clark. And then later in that same drive on third down, a play that Air Force doesn't like too much. you got to throw the football. Kalth comes up with a big catch down the football field. They're able to get points on the board. And then the struggles for OU in the first half. That's really been the story for me. Landry Jones has got to settle down. Ben Haber, and he snaps it on the ground. Landry Jones throws it away. That takes him out of field goal range. Oklahoma needs to get it together in this second half. Our Geico players to watch in the second half, Warzika. 
51 yards on five carries, but they shut him down. He had 51 over the first two, and they shut him down on the last three. Ryan Broyles, he could be the difference for Oklahoma to settle them down in the second half. Now, Landry Jones has to get him some touches and get him the balls, but Broyles is that good a playmaker for the Sooners, as we saw on those six grabs with the first half. Downstairs we go. Jim Knox. Troy Calhoun and the head coach at Air Force told me that, hey, you know, he likes where his team is right now. They just got to finish some drives in the second half, clean up a few things. Other than that, he says he likes his chances here in the second half. We'll see what happens. Well, they're a confident group, Noxie. Well, I don't disagree. They don't make mistakes. They're a clean team. And, and by the way, those pooch punts we saw from Jefferson, he had never done that before. Well, and that's why it's such a great idea. No film of oh, oh, you can't prepare. Gets or Zika, and they'll stay right there on the kick from Tressway. So Air Force down by seven is going to get it first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Now, they had opportunities in the first half, but they stalled. And you see the yardage they got frequently stalling around the midfield stripe, so then Oklahoma started deep in their own territory. But for me, it's it's nine plays, ten plays, seven, six, eight. I mean, they never were just stopped, and that's why they've got such an advantage in terms of time of possession. They held the ball for a, a little over 17 minutes of that first half. That's exactly what they want to do. And they start this half with the football. So a great situation right now for Troy Calhoun's Falcons. Every one of their possessions, they produced at least one first down. They never went three and out with a punt. Now they get it for the first time in the second half, their own 20. Trailing by seven. They show three in the backfield. And Jefferson's got a lane. He's collared, though. As coming across for the Oklahoma Sooners, begging the play on the outside. Stacy McGee was up there. Fleming as well, but it was McGee first who got him around the shoulder pads. The sophomore is in his first season as a starter, along with Casey Walker. Both tackles sophomores for the Sooners, so inexperience up there. They've got Beal on the outside, though, and Alexander, who's got starts over the last two seasons on the other side. Going to be second and seven. Two. Boy, you think they push him back? Nope. He still falls forward for an extra yard. Tough, tough customer. Tough customer, meeting tough customer. Redshirt freshman from Texas, Tom Ward, the middle linebacker for OU. He sticks his nose right up in the A gap. That's what he's responsible for. He sheds the block of the center, gets lower than him, great leverage, and then stuffs two for only a couple of yards. It'll be third and four. Jefferson keeps it. And he spins across the 35 to the 37. You have to be honest with two because he'd been so successful and he got a lot of attention. Well, and this is what makes it so difficult is Jefferson on the outside. He actually fakes the pitch later on as we continue to roll it down the line of scrimmage. Right there, he looks out to the outside man, and that's what forces number 32, Jamel Fleming, to go out to the pitch man, opening up a lane for himself, Tim Jefferson. What a great job right there managing the option offense. Jefferson will give it to Asher Clark, who slices his way across the 39 to the 40. It's about three and a half yards. So it's very clean. They don't turn the ball over. They don't put it on the ground. Uh, they just, it's a very succinct style of football. It's frustrating. OU knows they've got the better athletes, and yet they sit there and they can't get off the football field because of the execution from Troy Calhoun's Falcons. Kind of matter of fact, the way they do their business. Two into the secondary another first down for the air force academy they came in leading the nation in rushing and leading by a lot and travis lewis who's such a great will linebacker for ou this is a prime example of what this option offense does to you it forces you to hesitate and then bang all of a sudden asher clark is into your right hip and you're not able to go up there and make a tackle for for no loss there's a flag no yard and maybe a yard the most for two as they stuff it for one of the few times when you're trying to read what's going on and that that split second of hesitation that'll get you as a defense would it be declined he's presenting the options to Oklahoma sideline illegal formation too many men in the backfield offense five yard penalty we play first down well I was just talking about the efficiency over the first two games of the Air Force Academy mm -hmm. 
And, and it's not by a little that they lead the nation. Granted, it's only two games, but they ran for over 400 yards last week against BYU, well, and that's unheard of. That is unheard of, and it's not like Georgia Tech is not running the ball well. They're averaging 331 <laughs> yards. Air Force is just that much better. All the uh, Already today, 149 yards on the ground for Air Force. It gets to very quick, powerful Oklahoma defense. Spinning his way, kicking out of the tackle is Asher Clark. Big yardage. He got 10, almost 11. Demontre Hurst lassoed him. Young man from Lancaster, Texas. Otherwise, he's down the scene. Ward right in the middle. Redshirt freshman. Sheds a block. Just not quite in position to get Asher Clark, who is a very strong runner. It's second and four. They'll give it to Halderman. He breaks an arm tackle and has a first down inside the 40 to the 39. Just try to figure them out because Halderman's coming one way. The motion of the entire other side, the offensive line of the other back, is coming the other way. What I loved it on the, is on the previous play, it was the same type of movement except Clark got the handoff, so that time they just bring it on the end around and get a catch OU napping a little bit. First down. It's two. Too few for Air Force. He gets a yard. Travis Lewis put him down. I, I, we really enjoyed talking to the Falcons coaching staff this week. Clay Hendricks, our offensive coordinator, he had some funny lines. And, and just overall talking about that they're not a real comfortable team to get accustomed to. You don't and, want to face it. And he knows that. Yep. And, you know, and that's, and he knows that that is to his advantage. Said, I don't think the Air Force is a lot of fun to prepare for. And that's exactly the way the Sooner staff felt about it. Now, wide side option. Jefferson's got a good lane. Down the sideline and has a block out in front. To the 10 to the 5, and he's in. Jefferson and the Falcons a point after from tying things up. It looked like Cody gets with a beautiful block downfield. Wearing you out, wearing you out. Air Force comes out with the option. Tony Jefferson too wide for his responsibility. And then Cody gets hustling down the field. Bang. Jonathan Nelson goes to the ground, and it's an easy touchdown for Tim Jefferson. What a terrific play and execution from Air Force. To tie it up, Soderberg puts it through, and we are all even on a very impressive 80-yard drive of the Air Force Academy to start the second half. So the speed of their quarterback, Jefferson, the junior from Atlanta, and it's all even in Norman. Four minutes into the second half. Television so amazing, you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. Joel Meyer, Joe, Joel Klatt, Jim Knox, back in Norman, Oklahoma, and they're... 71st consecutive sellout, absolutely stunned. I got a kick out of uh, some of the things we heard from Clay Hendricks, our offensive coordinator. One line he said, We run 40s against our opponents, we won't win many matchups. <laughs> but they're out executing their opponents, right. and they're tied at 10 right now. So, nine play, 80 yard drive, our free credit score.com scoring drive. Just about four minutes off the clock. It'll be Murray and Madhu. And they've been very quiet since that opening drive, haven't they? The running backs for the Sooners. In fact, only 31 yards rushing for the Sooners. On the ground, big hop from Madu at the 20. And a nice lane over to the left side. What an adjustment, Madu. Across the midfield strike. And fumbled it, but it was out of bounds. It's a great field position, but a look back on the score by Jefferson. When you look at this block from Cody Guess, you got to keep in mind, he's 5'7", 170 pounds. Great move by Tim Jefferson. And then here he goes. He's going to throw. That's what they call it. He's going to throw on the legs of Jonathan Nelson. What a beautiful job. And what you always hear about with Air Force is their offense gets people on the ground. And Cody Getz does a terrific job on the last play, popping it for Tim Jefferson. It's the first time that Oklahoma has started with the ball across the midfield strike. They're in Air Force territory at the 41. Now, Landry Jones settled down. Boyles is there. Breaking tackles on his way inside the five. It'll be first and go to the five. That'll settle you down if you're a quarterback. 
you're not in rhythm, go to your best receiver, and that's what he does. Landry Jones does throw in rhythm on his feet on this play. An accurate pass to Ryan Broyles, and then he shows you the strength in the back end, but here come the Sooners. DeMichael Murray spins, he's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Boy, that took a long time, didn't it? What they couldn't do in the first half was answer Air Force. The way Air Force puts together their most impressive drive of the game, gets into the end zone for the first time, and it takes OU all of two plays to come back and put a score on the board. About 31 seconds. <laughs> That's all. Jimmy Stevens in for the point after. And as he pushes it, it still is inside the upright. 17-10 Sooners, Murray with his second touchdown of the game. And the Sooners back on top of Air Force. To Oklahoma. Well, and, and Ryan Broyles is the one who set up the touchdown for DeMarco Murray and Broyles again. Yeah, Madu with the long kickoff run. Right? So, so we got all three of them. Nice shots, boys. Or Zika and Gats waiting for the kick from Tressway. He does have the wind at his back. Pretty good breeze. So 14 points between the two over the first four and a half minutes of the third. We had 13 the entire first 30 minutes of play. Warzika angling it over to the right, and it does your work. They'll have it at the 22 when we come back. For first, a game break with Darren Horton. Darren. Joel, you've got a good one. And in Knoxville, Tennessee just went 71 yards in three plays. Matt Sims, 49 yards to Denarius Moore. And the balls are tied at 10 with number seven, Florida. Good game going to the second half. Been to Nalen, one of the great venues as well in Knoxville. Daniel Noble is in at tackle underneath for the Sooners. Young man, they like a lot of freshmen. Flower Mound, Texas. He's got number 93 on his back. Jefferson, and it was Noble who stayed at home and got him around the ankles. Puts him down across the 23 near the 24. We had mentioned just a few minutes ago that Air Force has not gone a possession today without picking up at least one first down. And this is a good defense, folks. I know that they're replacing seven starters from a year ago, but a very good and aggressive defense that they're doing this on. Two has been shut down at least early here in the second half. They stayed at home with the fullback. He got about two, two and a half, but he was getting good chunks. Five to seven, eight yards of the first half. I really like what number 93 Noble has been doing for Oklahoma. In there, there he's, a, he's a young guy. They like him a lot, but he's staying on his feet. And too many times you see guys on the ground. As soon as you see guys on the ground in the middle of the defense when Air Force is playing them, expect a big play. Noble's doing a terrific job staying upright. It's a young shooter squad. They've already used 12 true freshmen. Three have started. Haldeman with a toss on the reverse, and they can't get him outside Hunter again. Mikel Hunter broke one like that for a touchdown. Jeremy Beal, Demontre Hurst combining for the stop. Jeremy Beal, left defensive end for OU, the all Big 12 player a year ago. Here he is, staying home, doing his job. That's all the defensive coordinator ever wants you to do is do your job. Wider than the widest. Then he sees the ball carrier. He comes back, forces him inside, and makes the tackle. Tremendous play from Jeremy Beal. So for the first time today, it's three and out with a punt for the Air Force Academy. It'll be Ryan Broyles. He had a big one against Oklahoma State. You remember last year, an 87-yarder for a touchdown. End over ender. He won't go off the fair catch, and he spins away for the pursuit. Broyles across the 45, and another short field. First, Madu on the kick return, and now a nifty punt return by Broyles. Puts it all the way at the 45, the Sooners.
you got to go to your sure-handed senior or junior wide receiver Ryan Broyles and then Murray with a good tough run right behind Stevenson in there at left guard he gets it into the end zone and OU feels a little bit better uh, about themselves now in the second half especially after this last three and out from Air Force their first three and out of the game and now OU again with a short field and I'm sure they're going to play with the up-tempo style that we've seen all day long. Let's see if they try to get Murray involved again like they did in the first drive of the game. Miller fullback slides into position for DeMarco Murray. Nice lane up on the right side. Murray gets quick six across the 50 down to the 49. So uh, we talked about the overall strength up front yeah. and, and the size mismatch if they do want to pound the football. Well, this is this is the time of the game where that will, you know, come to pass. That that size and weight that's been leaning on you all day long. It'll be second and four. Murray again. They push him back. I mean, he had four before he could even get close to the line of scrimmage. They had pushed him that far back. It moves it down to the 42. But what I love about DeMarco Murray is his ability to have one cut out of the pistol. He gets it, he presses the line of scrimmage to the right, and then he cuts directly back up the field. Not back left, Joel, but right north and south directly up the field. That's why he's able to get those yards. Murray is just the second in Sooner history to pass a thousand yards and rushing, receiving in returns. Buster Rhymes back in the early 80s, the only other one to do it. Now Landry Jones looking around for the availability. Boy, as he settled down, he goes out of bounds inside the 25. It's a totally different player. Great decision and shows some athleticism down the rail. In the first half, he would have tucked that and then brought it back up to throw it and thrown it back into the sidelines, maybe up into the stands. But here, he looks for a second read, gets to his third read. Now he's going to tuck it, and he decides, you know what, I've got a chance to get out of bounds. Now I can get the rail and get the first down. To first down, he moves the pocket by design. It's Kenny dropping the ball again. Kind of fighting it on that one, didn't he? Kenny out of Garden City Junior College a couple of years ago, and, and very surprising. Bob Stoops trying to get him some confidence on the sideline. He's been playing consistent football on the outside. Good blocking, always where he's supposed to be, and catching the football, but we haven't seen that today. Now, last week, four catches, 73 yards. Kind of a breakthrough game against Florida State. The opposite with his second drop. Now, it'll be second and ten. Here comes the heat on Jones. Got it away in time. And the heat was coming. The pressure from Anthony Wright, Jr. Corner at a blitz. This is a product of a freshman being on the outside. That stills on the outside to the right. The wide receiver, number four for Oklahoma. He's a true freshman. He's got to call out a cat call, which is a corner blitz. They go in a true hurry up this time. Over the middle. Batted away at the last second, Lindsay. It was right there for Ryan Royals. Boy, Brian Lindsay saved a touchdown. This guy coming in for Chris Thomas, who was a great strong safety for Air Force a couple of years ago. What a terrific play. Outstretched hand running down the field with Ryan Broyles. That's tough to do. And this ball was accurately thrown. That's going to be a touchdown if Lindsey doesn't get his hand on that football. A great shot right there. Lindsey selling out to block the, that pass. It'll be a 41-yard try now for Jimmy Stevens. He's already got a 32-yarder. Clean exchange on its way, and it's good. So Jimmy Stevens. Doing a phenomenal job filling in for the injured Patrick O'Hara. That's the 21st field goal of his career. Don't forget, he was in there for him in 08. Not a factor last year, and in an emergency situation, comes through. After that scramble, they were on schedule. That's a little bit frustrating. Bob Stoops talked about they need to execute better. Well, Kenny Steele's has got to execute better. He didn't call out that corner blitz, Joel. That's why they had to settle for a field goal. Well, and that corner blitz was by Anthony Wright Jr. And as we look back on the bowl game for Air Force last year, Wright was in the middle of things at Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, the home of TCU, it was Armed Forces Bowl. Three interceptions tying a school record. And Air Force on their way to a decisive victory over Houston because of the big plays of Anthony Wright Jr. winning by 27 points. You remember that was a top 25 Houston team that just beat, beat a top 25 BYU team and Anthony Wright Jr. is a large reason why they're in this football game. Very good corner. 
Lot Trophy, Nagurski Award watch list, all the second team All Mountain West Conference a year ago, along with Reggie Rimbert on the other side, who was a first team All Mountain West player. They've got two corners out there that could play in any program in the Mountain West, and that includes TCU and Utah. Way with a good one. Warzika backpedaling with no momentum. Wise decision to stay back there as Air Force will have it at their own 20. We head to Southern California. Darren Horton with a game break. Darren. Joel in Seattle, Bo Pelini's Cornhuskers making quite a statement on the road, and they're doing it on defense. Last week, the black shirts had two picks returned for a touchdown. This is Alfonso Denard for pick six, number eight, Nebraska on a roll, 49-21 in the third. That's 49. We're still eight plus to play in the third. Well, Husky Stadium is going to clear out in a hurry. Well, and, and Nebraska, Bo Pelini said he's got a good defense coming into this year, and, and, and they're proving him to be correct. Air Force has it. The third time of the second half. It's two. The fullback slides up the middle for over five, almost six yards. Tripped up by Frank Alexander, the end on the far side. So all of a sudden, now playing catch-up, which is tough for a team like Air Force. It's 10. It's just not one score anymore. How about the kid who just came into the game that we were talking about earlier? Big number 93, Daniel Noble. He's on his back in a hurry. And now it's going to be third and as short as we remind you. The first and 10 line is brought to you by Phillips Television. How critical is this third down for Air Force with the momentum belonging to Oklahoma? Have to execute on this third down. These chains have got to move with the way OU's offense is playing right now. Four of 11 on their third down tries. Halderman goes in motion, gets the kick out block. He's got the first down. He took a shot from Jonathan Nelson, the safety boy, the low, accepted the blow, and moves the chain. Tough kids playing for Air Force. Kyle Halderman does not shy away from the 188 pound junior, Jonathan Nelson. Let's listen in. Had crunch in there, and he knew how important that first down was, and that's why he lowered that shoulder. Interesting formation. They sent Asher Clark in motion. Available is Warren Sneaker on his way. Nelvin on his back. Nelson pulls him down at the 35. Big play, and what a lead by Jefferson, the quarterback. Great throw by Jefferson. Very good route by Warzika, hiding himself in the middle of that coverage and then popping open late. Warzika holding on to the football. Very smart. Knows he's going to get hot, caught. Doesn't have the speed to break away. So he covers up the football. He makes sure that they have the ability to snap it on first down now from the 35-yard line. Well, they had only 25 injury tosses. Timeout. And it is an injury timeout. 25 throws by Jefferson over the first two games. 25 it's 11 so far for Jefferson today in a catch-up mode well and he's thrown it pretty well and as you take a look around the uh, around the Big 12 see what Kansas uh, did last night that was a Friday and then earlier Iowa State and Kansas State that was a terrific game it's going Col on in Boulder well Colorado's trying to come back they got the lead now Nebraska we've already seen that big lead TCU they've got a very good football team I know people have high expectations for Baylor but now you see the night schedule as Oklahoma State, AM, and, and Texas and Texas Tech are going to lock horns there in Lubbock. Should be a great night of Big 12 football coming up. Javon Harris is coming in for Jonathan Nelson, the strong safety after that completion to Warnica. Now Jefferson looking to throw again, wanted to go to hold him, and now he'll run instead. Loses the football. And would it be the safety who just came to the game? Who picked it up? The Sooners say they have it. They had an edge on the football. And in the wrestling match. They'll give it to Oklahoma. Jeremy. So Jefferson loses it. Was it Beal from behind? I, I think it was number 44, the senior. 267 pounds, not giving up on the play. Javon Harris may have come back and recovered that ball. Yeah, it yeah, was Beal. From a, a terrific job. That's not giving up on the play. And then there's Javon Harris, who initially told you, you see that he lost it, but he wrestled it back at the bottom of that pile. That's all want to from OU. And, and the backup safety, Javon Harris, sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma. So that's the first turnover of the contest. And, and Harris came into the game on that snap for Jonathan Nelson. Got a bit of Marco Murray. Good blocking up the middle, weaving his way. Boy, 
Talk about a back with good vision. Well, vision and patience, pressing the line of scrimmage. That's what our running backs coaches always said is you got to, in the zone scheme, you got to press this line of scrimmage all the way to the right so that when you cut back and you cut back straight up the field, which DeMarco Murray does, there's a hole for you. No hole that time. No gain. It'll be second and close to 10 as they shut down DeMarco Murray. He's featured early. They got away from it. And so far in the game, 80 yards on 16 carries, two touchdowns for Murray. So averaging better than 100 yards per contest over the first two. And now up against the 3-4 defense of the Falcons. Middle's available, boys. He's got it. Oh, stop him, Don. <laughs> Those are good breaks. He's got it to the 45, and I believe he's got enough for the first down. This is a Sunday wide receiver right here, probably in the slot when he gets to the next level. But this guy has special ability on the outside, running against man. He sees the green grass underneath the, the back end of the coverage, and here OU goes again. They're going true hurry, going low and driving. Murray for three, almost four, close to the 49. So the clock moves close to the four-minute mark. Just about 11 minutes gone in the third. Oklahoma by 10. And they've got the last 10 points of the ball game after it was tied at 10. Now a little check with me. Here come the signals from the sideline. Murray again. They tried to scrape it away. Did they get the grill? Oklahoma thinks yeah. it was a face mask. It looks like and it now looked a real like late it. flag for the field judge, and it was probably a face mask. Yeah. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15-yard penalty from end to run, automatic first down. Good call. Ricketts reaching in there trying to stop DeMarco Murray. You're not going to have a whole lot of success with arm tackles on this guy anyways. Unfortunately for Air Force, he got a lot of face mask on that one. 15 more yards tacked on, and all of a sudden, no use inside the 35-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back mistakes. First, the turnover, the first of the game by Jefferson. Now another mistake by the Air Force Academy. Quick little bubble screen. Murray on the outside. Got the block for the wide receiver, and that's Broyles enabling him to get close to another first down. Got about nine because of the Broyles block. I love seeing that from a superstar. Ryan Broyles is going to play on Sundays, and yet he goes down, and he gets into the legs of the cornerback so that Murray can have the edge. Rimmer there is unable to tackle Murray because of the block of Broyles. I absolutely love the unselfish play from Ryan Broyles. It'll be second and a yard. Madu into the game. Quickly Broyles pivots to the sideline. He's got a first down. And there is a continuity now to the Oklahoma offense. Knocked out by Austin Nicholas, the sophomore from Fullerton, California. You got to keep them out of rhythm because when they find it, they are dangerous. And that's exactly what Matt Waller said, the defense coordinator of Air Force, told us all week long. It'll be first down for the 19. Making a miss. Nice run, Moses Madu. But both the running backs, and you talked about it, they don't run themselves out of plays. A lot of that has to do with the patience and pressing the line of scrimmage. You don't just run yourself into the defense, find the hole, and then once it's there, explode north and south and get into it. It'll be second and four, Madu staying in there. And making the most with a flag down of the play where you normally see a hole that's thrown at the feet of the offensive lineman. Jarvis Jones, big 76. Offense, number 76. 10-yard penalty to play second down. How about the effort of a do, though? <laughs> he looked like he was down. Well, an incredible run. We, we were told all week that this guy has been as impressive as the sensational DeMarco Murray. There's the hold right there, right behind the defensive player for Air Force. That's Brian Lindsay. But then the spins and constantly keeping your feet. We talk about it as a defense, equally as important as a running back to keep your feet. Second and 14 now for the Sooners. Back to 23 of the Falcons. Blitz coming. And going to DeWan Miller inside the 20, down to the 17. Experience over there for a guy that 
started eight games last season and had a 12 yard average. This guy has potential to be a very good wide receiver. 6'4, 220, has the frame, has the athletic ability. He's just trying to find that consistency, both in his route running and catching ability, to find the field consistently for OU. Well, and now there's depth, though. OU talk about Kenny Stills and some of the other freshmen. So, while well, Dewan Miller at 36 grabs, tough getting on the field. There's good competition for the wide receiver spot. Miller was the motion man. Screen the other runner to Marco Murray. To the 10 to the 5. He's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. He had a convoy out in front of him on the left side. That big offensive line running the sidewalk on the screen pass Murray all he has to do is cut back he's gonna find himself in the end zone for an easy touchdown you see Hayburn out there Gabe Eichert is getting a terrific block and then the cutback and the speed defense doesn't have much chance against DeMarco Murray out in the open field Jimmy Stevens for the point after 90 seconds left in the third and now all Oklahoma what an explosion so Oklahoma led it 10 to 3 at the half. They've come alive here in the third quarter. And Landry Jones playing within himself. Well, Real he, comfortable. Does, he does a nice job of influencing the defense towards his left with his eyes originally. That's when the offensive line is going to be able to get out and they're going to run the sidewalk, which is right there. They're going to get to the numbers from the hash to the numbers, run the sidewalk, and then find somebody to put on the ground. At this point, you even see they're looking back to get blocks on the backside, which is going to open up the lane for the cutback. And DeMarco Murray finds himself with an easy lane for a touchdown. That is a screen that is well executed by the Oklahoma offense. And the explosiveness of Murray and the good vision. We've talked about that vision all second half from these running backs, both Madu and Murray. And that's a prime example on the touchdown pass from Landry Jones. So DeMarco Murray with three scores today, two on the ground, a third through the air on that screen. And there you see the all-purpose yards, at least uh, rushing and receiving. So a productive second half to start for Stoops and the Sooners. Warzika and Getz waiting back deep. Way has taken out the return game though with the long line drives. He's got the wind at his back once again. And out of the reach of Getz into the end zone and out. Let's take a look now at our lot impact player of the week and it's Mike Muhammad of the Cal Golden Bears coming off a 52-7 win over Colorado last week at Strawberry Canyon. It's all presented by Acura and against Colorado. He had his seventh career pick. So as we continue to look at the candidates for the Ronnie Lott Award, our Lot Impact Player of the Week presented by Acura. No, no surprise, Joel. Sorry that that OU forced a turnover there. They've kind of lived on turnovers in the Bob Stoops era, and that leads to a score. It kind of opens this ball game up 27-10. Yeah, that's points. Even though it was a long drive of 76 yards, it's points off a takeaway. That fumble by Jefferson. Jared, too, still plugging his way, isn't he? He's got seven on first down. Jim Knox, what's going on downstairs? All right, Joel, just about to hit the fourth quarter and looking back at this offensive line. The Sooners, those guys look fresh as a daisy. They came off saying, hey, we're wearing them down. You guys called it right. You know, the undersized defensive line of Air Force really taking its toll going up against the beef here on the offensive line of the Sooners. Well, Knoxie, they look like a fresh group, at least here in the third. Breaking tackles. There goes Asher Clark. Spinning through arm tackles and finally pulled down by the freshman Tony Jefferson. We talked about it. The focus, the fearless aspect of this That's team. Right. They're down 17. No big deal. Well, Asher Clark in high school was a powerlifting champion in the state of Georgia, and he's showing you the strength in his lower half on this run. Spinning in the balance and able to get the ball down the field now across the 50 for Air Force. You can't relax, can you? Air Force has it. First and 10 of the Sooners, 46. Holder with the Moser man. Wide side. It'll be a pitch. Nothing doing that time. 
It's Demontre Hurst putting down Clark, the sophomore from Lancaster, Texas. He played in every game last year as a true freshman, a track guy, and we've seen his speed. Well, and no, normally you could just say, yeah, nice tackle by Demontre Hurst, but it took everybody. Tom Port was in there stopping the fullback. Tony Jefferson forced the pitch from Tim Jefferson, and then Hurst has his responsi responsibility taken up. Outside arm free coming up, tackling the pitch man. Loss of five, seven, and 15, and that's going to be the final snap of the third. Kind of sums it up for the Sooners, though. They have kept the Falcons off schedule for the most part since the first drive of the second half for uh, the Air Force Academy. We'll come right back to Norman, Oklahoma. Final 15 minutes of regulation coming up. And a commanding lead now for the Sooners of 17 as you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips Televisions. It's the start of the fourth quarter in Norman, Oklahoma. Our direct TV game summary and a third quarter where Oklahoma certainly picked up the pace. Marco Murray, the featured guy along with Ryan Royals, no shot there. And after it was tied at 10, it's 17 unanswered points for the Sooners over the last 11 minutes of the third. And with this offense, now you, can, you can't go a possession without scoring if you're Air Force. Very important thus far. Ashton Clark, the motion man, gets it on the toss. And the speed of the Oklahoma defense. Gang tackling on the outside. And a loss. Fleming pushed him in there. The cornerback didn't give ground on that side. And Travis Lewis flying from his Will linebacker spot all the way to the boundary. And that's the thing that kills you if you're Air Force is the speed in pursuit of Oklahoma. And the Big 12 new defensive newcomer of the year last year shows you, or excuse me, a couple of years ago, as a freshman shows you just why he was that. It'll be third and 15. Jefferson has shown a good arm, and he's got his man Lawrence cut. First down inside the 35. Boy, he's got a rifle, and he's hit for a high percentage today. That's now 7 for 12 for Jefferson. Lewis on the outside. He's the one that's going to have to wall off where Zika gets too far outside. That allows that inside track to where Zika, and he's able to catch the ball from Jefferson, but that was a mistake from Travis Lewis. This direction where Zika wanted to throw it, trying to make a miss, and the outside. Man, Jamel Fleming did not bite on that fake. Alert play by Fleming once again, and a gain of only a yard. That's tough on well, open space. And, and disciplined football as well. And he knows that he all he's got to do is stay on the outside because he's got guys like Lewis that are pursuing from the inside out. He's just got to keep his arm outside arm free, and they're going to make the tackle. Got to be second, a little less than nine. Drives to the line. Two, sliding off tackle. And he's inside the 30 down to the 29. Brings up a third and three as we had to L.A. Darren Horton, what's going on? Well, Joel, in Minnesota, USC trailing by a point at one point in the third, but here and come the Trojans. Allen Bradford, 56 yards on this run. They've scored 19 unanswered. They lead the Gophers by 18 in the fourth. Thank you, Darren. They can score with the best of them. And the defense picking it up a little bit now for the Trojans of USC on the home turf of the Golden Gophers. And on a third and about three, a first down. As the drive continues for the Air Force Academy. And this is the ball game, basically, a drive that started back at their own 20. Just about two and a half minutes into the fourth playing catch up down by 17. They've got a score on each possession now. Good protection, Jefferson. And Mikel Hunter was the intended target. Corner came up first, upset that he didn't get a piece of it. But it was a hot one. This is what's tough if, if you're Air Force, is Oklahoma is built for the spread offenses of the Big 12. And so they are well-schooled in the passing tree, the route combinations that you can possibly throw out there. So when you're only sending one guy out on a pass route, they're going to be right there defending them with more athletic guys. You look at the scoreboard, a 17-point lead, but Air Force is out gained him. Here comes Jefferson trying to make a miss. Man on his back, though, Travis Lewis. Otherwise, it's an easy first down. 
and he had to recover because this looked from up here it looked like there was a solid lane for Jefferson to run and Lewis is going to have to get off the block of Michael Hester the center for Air Force and make the play or else that's a first down for Air Force inside the 15. It's that third and a little more than three. Cody Getz goes in motion. It's two. Spins I think enough for the first down that last little lunge inside the 14. What an effort. Talk about a tough customer. That's what they say about him. This guy was second team all Mountain West Conference a year ago, led the team in rushing. He was fourth in the conference in rushing. He was a preseason all Mountain West selection. Tough customer. And that's what they need out of their fullback. The average 71 a game over the first two after 75 a game last season. Warzika trying to beat him wide, makes him miss initially. And then it is Jamel Fleming once again the corner on that side. Boys had a nice series, yep. even though the drive is still alive. Well, that was big number 90, David King, who had the first shot on Warzika. But the tenacity of the littler Air Force players. I mean, Warzika, he's only 5'9", 180 pounds, that taking the, on these OU players. <laughs> King is 258. That was a problem for King, though. He went under. He couldn't get him. <laughs> Too small. It'll be second and eight his way off the right side first carry Nathan Walker the senior from Colorado Springs at 5'11 210 coaches told us this guy is a consistent guy gives Jared to a nice rest as the backup full fullback dependable player great program guy does everything right shows you with a hard run right there to get within third and one how about Oklahoma Oklahoma taking a timeout on a third and a little more than a yard Still a 17-point lead for the Sooners as we come right back to Norman. Arizona State in a good day again at Arrowhead in Kansas City for the Wildcats in Kansas State 3-0 now. Daniel Thomas, you see his numbers. He's a big reason. He had 234 in their opener. He is a big reason. They are 3 0 so far this season. And that is next week on College Football Saturday. And, and I love going to Manhattan because it's an hour away from my favorite city in Kansas, Salina. Salina. The home of Brent Venables, too. And, that's, and that's Gene, right. and Gene Ansel. Time. Gene Ansel from Salina, Kansas. So I am headed back to Salina, fortunately. There's two. He's in. Touchdown, Air Force. We got a game. 10 43 to play. You figure they get two more possessions. They had to score on all three. One done. That's what, it, that's what we said about the 50-yard line of that drive. We said Air Force cannot have any more possessions where they don't score points. What do they do? They drive down the football field, a great third down conversion to Warzika from Tim Jefferson, and then Jared, too, with the exclamation point at the end of the drive, pulling them within 11, now trying to make it 10. Sutterberg does exactly that, and it is they never, ever quit. Good to know. They're a part <laughs> and they're working for us. That's absolutely <laughs> true. The Falcons from the Air Force Academy, 27-17, as we we'll come right back to Norman. Defensive end, Jeremy Beal, he never comes all the way in to force that ball to be pulled by Tim Jefferson. Tim Jefferson just reads that five technique. And because the five technique stayed wide, Jared too gets the football for an easy touchdown. Boy, the right guard, A.J. Wallerstein. And Chase Dart. Yeah, he uh, on that red, that right. whole right side, but Wallerstein, yes, it starts with him blocking that one technique. Soderbergh with the kick, and it's out of bounds. Good field position for Oklahoma. The last thing that Air Force needed was a short field for the Sooners. You know, we told you Orzika was going to be a player to watch in this second half, and he absolutely was, especially on that last drive. That big third down conversion, a nice run getting around David King, the, the defensive end, and then all the way in earlier. Jared, too, gets in for a touchdown, but in large part because Warzika got them down the football field. That third down conversion was as big as it gets for Air Force with the game on the line having to put points on the board. Air Force has had it for 30 minutes, 30 seconds, compared to just about 19, not quite, for the Sooners. But new in motion, Murray 
and Madu. They swing out to Moses Madu, and Royals gives him a little bit of a chip. Not enough to get rid of the man, Reggie Rembert, who made the stop. Reggie Rembert did a great job staying on his feet, like we've said all day long, makes the tackle. First and 10 line brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Now the Sooners want to choose some clock. They know it is far from over. Only a 10-point lead. So there's no hurry up in them. Well, they'll go and make the call to the line. Well, that's personnel purposes to keep the defense on the field. Simple handoff, but do. And he's got the first down across the midfield strike. So that could effectively chew up another 90 seconds off the clock for the Falcons. So first and 10 soon. You know, with 10 minutes left, I think that they're probably, Kevin Wilson is just thinking, let's just run our offense. You know, we, we won't worry about the clock just yet because if we score points, that's just as good as limiting an Air Force possession. But they have been effective on the ground, and that won't hurt either, as Murray is not stopped for a loss or no gain. It looked like he was going to be shut down. He still gets a little more than two out of it, and it keeps the clock rolling. Air Force Academy has all three timeouts on the board, two left for Oklahoma. A total yards, 393, 324. Falcons over the Sooners there. The scoreboard's all the counts granted, but they have been able to stay in the game. A ton of time. DeMarco Murray, he's got the first down. Good pocket protection for Landry Jones against the 3 4. Starts with the protection. Then it's on the feet of the quarterback and the eyes of the quarterback looking down the football field. As soon as he doesn't see anything wide open, he gets it right back to his check down. Just so happens to be DeMarco Murray, one of the most electric guys in college football. That's a good check down to have if you're Landry Jones. Not a bad safety yeah, valve. That's a great safety <laughs> valve. First and 10 of the 37 of Air Force. Score here could put it away for the Sooners. It's again Moses Madu got to take it with you. And they're going to say he ran and dropped the ball. It was a catch. No game, basically. And he hits some real estate if he doesn't drop it. Second time we've seen that from Madu. Takes his eyes off the football. And yeah, he did have some real estate, and that's why he took his eyes off this football. The misdirection faked to Murray out to Madu. And you can see his he eyes already down the field. He never had. Probably yeah. should have been incomplete. But it's, you know. Doesn't really matter, it's still second and ten. A little more than eight to play. No. Tight ends haven't been involved at all today, have they? Rattery had one catch. This is Broyles. Little kick block from Stills. Can't make a miss though. And on the outside, John Davis. That prevented a first down run for Ryan Broyles after the catch. Very smart player, John Davis is. He added 15 pounds in this offseason, getting ready for this, his junior year out of Ohio. But a nice open field tackle on Ryan Broyles. It'll be third and eight. Boy, what a play coming up for Air Force. He can run for it instead. Throws it behind Miller. That'll stop the clock with 7.26 to play. And did it get touched on its way to Miller? I think it did get tipped there. Number 86. Gardner got it. I think Gardner got a piece of that, but still, even if he, I mean, it didn't knock it off course that much. That's a bad pass. It'll be fourth and eight. And will they go for it? Or just try to get the Falcons to make a mistake, jump. No, they will on fourth and eight. Down the seam, out of the reach of Ryan Broyles. And another rushed throw from Landry Jones in a pressure situation on fourth down. And now the excitement and the momentum are on the Air Force side. We said that Landry Jones needs to settle his feet and follow through. If he waits another half beat, Broyles is running down the field wide open. And he's going to be able to go right into the end zone. As it is, 10 points away are the Air Force have the ball after this. My thoughts with the family of Reggie Gill. 
We are back ready. A key drive for Air Force. And it's the fullback, too. And he gets five. It's interesting. Joel and I talked about it while we were away. Joel Myers, Joel Platt down to the sideline. Jim Knox. Why did Oklahoma not pooch it, make it a long field? And that's a question to be asked. To, and put it down inside the tent. And a long field for Air Force. There are two enemies for Air Force. The clock and yards. Because of the offense they run, why not take both? Big run. Asher Clark denied the first down by about a foot. It's a great play by McGee. He just jerked him back because otherwise he's going forward and he's across the marker and you never know. And Air Force plays with a fast tempo anyways, but with 640, now 639 and ticking down in this game, the clock is a factor for the Falcons. It's going to be third and about a foot. You have to believe it's going to be the fullback too. It is. He's got it. Across the 40. Six out to the 47. So it stops for the movement of the chain. 6.24 to play. All the timeouts are still left for Air Force. Two remaining for Oklahoma in a 10-point ball game. Literally basically two possessions at the most left for Air Force. So they've got to score on both. They just got it done to their last drive, an 80-yard drive and a five-yard run. Touchdown by Jared Two. Can they get the explosive play? Jefferson's looking to that direction and fires to his wideout. It's complete in front of Fleming. And taking it in for the Air Force Academy. That's Brandon Hernis, wide receiver out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Sophomore making his first catch of the day. Taking it right to the fullback. Good protection by the offensive line. Tim Jefferson delivers a strike. Almost for a first down. Second and nine. It is a first down. Two again. Stopping the clock. It's down to the 40. So back-to-back -back first downs. 5.37 left. If they can get a score in the next 90 seconds, it could be real interesting. They're not built for that, but yes, you, you never know. You keep pounding that fullback into the middle of the line of scrimmage, and maybe something opens up on the outside. Not made for playing catch-up football. Gats goes in motion. Jefferson looking in that direction. He's got a lot of real estate up the middle. There goes Jefferson for a first down again. Good recognition by the quarterback once the wideouts were taken away over on that side of the field. Dix. I don't know if there's a guy in college football that makes as many decisions as Tim Jefferson. This in the passing game, he decides to tuck it. Good decision. A lot of real estate, like you said, runs for a first down and more importantly, stops that clock. It's to the 26 quickly from their own 35. Different fullback this time, Nathan Walker. Only two, maybe three. Jim Knox, what's the latest? Nelson, the strong safety, Jonathan Nelson of Oklahoma, he's out of the game. Knee injury right now, guys. He hasn't returned since coming off the field a few moments ago. Okay, we saw Javon Harris in there earlier for him. Thanks, Noxie. It'll be second and seven. Fake it. Now in trouble and out of it. Tim Jefferson torpedoed by Alexander and Lewis. That'll take the off schedule. Well, Brent Venable said, you know, you, you can't just dial up blitz after blitz against this team because they'll beat you in the back end. But when you do dial up a blitz, it's got to be at the perfect time. Travis Lewis shooting through that B gap, and they're able to get in there and have a big sack for Air Force. Again, yardage and time are the two enemies for the Air Force Academy. Anytime you can get on the plus side of either of those, if you're OU, that's a good decision. That's a great call by Brent Venable. It'll be third down, 15. You see the numbers, so third down conversions, but mostly third and short goes Asher Clark. Got the first down to the 15-yard line on a little deception and delay. Unbelievable. Third and 15, the biggest game of Troy Calhoun's career at Air Force in the fourth quarter at OU, and he hands it off to Asher Clark. He's been battling that ankle all week. Don't see any effects on that first down run. Clock moving 348 and counting. Get it out on the edge. Hold him into the 10 to the 5. Dives. Is he there? Touchdown, Air Force. Do you believe it? 3.40 to play, and they drive 65 yards in about three minutes. They are stunned in Norman, despite the fact the Sooners are still on top. This was a wide pitch. You see, he pitches it all the way out, two yards outside the hash. Blocking on the outside, getting the defenders down to the ground. Jamel Fleming hit the ground, and then Halderman extending the ball for the pylon. We saw him earlier in the game lower the shoulder on Jonathan Nelson, and Halderman again a tough run. 
175 pounds selling out for the pylon gets into the end zone and air force now did he get in this is definitely a reviewable play it is under review right he, now he absolutely yes. got in if the if the pylon is touched you're in by the football that's a touchdown all the way for air force and they'll be attempting an extra point to get within three after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed touchdown 339 left and now another question coming aft after the extra point onside you don't need to you have three timeouts left your defense has been hit or miss you know OU's either been three and out or they've gone down and scored a touchdown so the way that he's gambled with fourth downs and third downs handing the ball off it wouldn't surprise me if Troy Calhoun First Soderberg, has, he's going to make it a three-point game. Got him. Yeah, if he doesn't get this, you'll onside, and he's got it. So now it's not a four-point game. It's only a field goal you need. You don't necessarily have to gamble with an onside kick because there's a lot of time and three timeouts left. We'll discuss that when we come back. But right now, the story, the number one team in the nation in rushing, doing it again and trailing the number nine team by three, 27-24. Good in Norman. 27-24 Oklahoma. But they're about to get the football back from Air Force after Air Force scored on a, another strong drive. Our E Harmony game numbers. You see what they've done on the ground. They averaged 423 a game coming in and against a very quick good defense. 351. Big numbers. Whistles before the kick as Oklahoma. Look for the onside kick. They didn't even have anybody back deep. And a timeout by the Sooners. They've only got one on the board now. So that last touchdown, 15 yards, the senior from Katy, Texas on the receiving end. Well, and, and Jamel Fleming on the right side of your formation, you see him looking into the middle. He is not on the outside on the flank of this defense. And then the pitch gets all the way out to this point of the field and even further. And that's the problem. Now, there's nobody out here for Oklahoma. And Fleming... He's going to get blocked and chopped down. He's the contained player. As soon as he hits the ground, it's a race for the pylon, and Haldeman wins it, gets in for the touchdown. As you said, a lot of containment. Jim Knox, do you have any containment for us? Uh, I, I think a little bit. I tell you what, this Air Force offense playing a heck of a ball game. You look at these guys on the bench, and, you know, they don't get too high. They don't get too low. It's just the same business-like approach ever since they kicked off this game, guys. They think, can hardly wait to get the ball back. Yeah, Jim, I think Barry Switzer said it best when he talked about their GPAs. <laughs> That's right. Bright group, nothing That's bothers right. them. Well, bright group, perspective. We talked about perspective. Right. They, they definitely have it. And let's, uh, let's not forget, they're military trained now. I mean, this is... This is no it's big a, experience it, for them. This deal. is not hard. This is, you know, this is just a day to go out there and, and have some fun with your buddies. And they're enjoying and savoring the opportunity to face the number nine team of the nation, trailing by only three. Came in huge underdogs. Sutter good kicks it away over the head of Broyles and out of the end zone. So now a long field, but let's face it, Oklahoma basically needs two to three first downs to run out the clock. Four minute offense. But you're only up by three points. This is a situation where your quarterback has got to manage the clock. And if your offensive line is worth their salt, they're going to go out there and win this game for you by being able to just hand the football to DeMarco Murray and Moses Madu. It is their time. The five up front have got to win this game for Oklahoma with 339 left. So DeMarco Murray's in there. They've got Miller on the hip of the left tackle. That's the fullback. He's the one who slides into the backfield. Murray bouncing across the 24, popped at the 25, gain of five. So good game, and Air Force is going to use their first timeout. So we talked about the winning streak on their home field of 32 consecutive, maybe even more impressive in 12 seasons under Bob Stoops, 68 and two here in Norman, Oklahoma. That's, that's a, hard to believe. Well, that's, that's definitely hard to believe. It's hard to do. The 32 games in a row. And Air Force comes in here with a gritty bunch. 
a talented bunch, a more talented bunch that Fisher DeBerry had in his last year a few years ago. Troy Calhoun came in, Joel, and he said, we need speed on the outside. And they were able to get that as evidence. We've had Warzika had big plays. Halderman has had big plays on the outside. A few different re receivers have caught third downs. And then the, the cowbell, Tim Jefferson, he's the one that starts off. He's the engine. He makes the decisions, the big decision on the last drive to keep it himself. Asher Clark shows you some speed on third and 15 for the conversion. And then Halderman with the race to the pylon wins it. Gets in and draws the academy within three points of OU. 32 home wins in a row for OU. On the line now, second and six. 332 left with a three-point lead. Well, when you think about Air Force, talk about a group with a lot of guts, though. And in that third and 15, they run the football. <laughs> Most teams wouldn't, just even, a, just wouldn't a, consider it. Guts and integrity and I mean, all you can throw all of those on this team. Uh, second down, Murray. Slides his way to the marker, and I think he's got the first down. He does across the 30, but he'll stop it momentarily for the movement of the chains. It's the 11th 100-yard game of the career of DeMarco Murray with that gain of a little more than five. Now you're in a milk-the-clock mode. Instead of being in that sugar huddle at the line of scrimmage, you're in the huddle back with Landry Jones, and he's going to wait, and he's going to hold his team in. They break at about 18. I'd like to see him snap it at about five of the play clock. Now it's at 10. He's going to get the play from the sidelines. This is clock management. This is managing the game from a quarterback's perspective. He'll take it down even better. Snapped it at about two. Murray taking it on Davis, the safety. A stoppage here. Second time out used by Air Force. That'll kill the clock with 2.50 to play. So as I said, two to three first down. Yep. Only one time out left. And maybe two more first downs and it's over for Oklahoma. Now you're getting down to it. This is where those 40 pounds per man and two inches per man, are they gonna take their toll on the Air Force defensive front? The Oklahoma offensive line, 40 pounds and two inches per man on average, bigger than the Air Force defensive line. DeMarco Murray, he's a sensational running back. He's the guy they're gonna be giving the ball to now and he's been very good all day long. I've been impressed with his vision and his ability to get behind his pads, get north and south and get yards that are tough yards. We know what he can do, Joel, in the open field. And you know, we see him out of the backfield on the screen pass, being able to cut back. Yeah, we know he's explosive there, but his ability to get skinny, get behind his pads and get those tough yards are what has impressed me today watching OU football. Well, he had three touchdowns already today. That is third best in total touchdowns in Oklahoma history. He's trailing only Billy Sims and Steve Owens. Two pretty good names in Oklahoma Sooner football history. Now on second and six, it's outside of the 34. It's Murray. And dropped down by Hennessy after a gain of about three in the final timeout taken. So a first down here, and it's all over. But this is the key for Air Force. Using their final timeout, can they get the stop on third down? And DeMarco Murray over the century mark. That was his 24th carry. 24 carries for now officially with that one. Taking two more yards up to 106. Three big scores. Well, Oklahoma's been at home. Now they hit the road. They've got the Bearcats of Cincinnati next week. And then we all look forward to it. October 2nd, the Red River Battle. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, and both, both squads, you know, trying to find themselves a little bit. I think we can say that about OU, even though they're more experienced maybe than a Texas squad. We were down in Austin, Joel, last week, saw Texas struggle a little bit in the first half. We see OU, they struggle a little bit in the first half. I don't want to take anything away from Air Force, but they, you know, they've done a heck of a job, but I'm looking forward to that matchup. And as we look ahead for Air Force, you know, they're going to have a tough schedule. Obviously, that Navy game is what stands out to me. Troy Calhoun has not won the Commanders in Chief trophy yet as the head coach of Air Force. He's got the squad to do it this year. That Navy game looms large on the second. This is the ball game for the Air Force Academy. Third and three. Oklahoma has it at their own 37. As soon as convert, they will prevail. Landry Jones slides Miller back into the backfield, the fullback. And will he throw for it? Yep, and he's got it. 
First down, Oklahoma. And that's Kenny Stills, the first-year freshman from Encinitas, California. And for the first time today, Landry Jones heeds the advice of his quarterback coach, and he stays patient in the pocket, allows the play to develop, and stills to find a hole in the zone defense. He knows he's going to get hit. He got whacked on the play, but he stays in there and de delivers a strike to stills and moves the chain. And now with the clock running, you've got to milk the clock. Looks like it's a win for OU. I like the way he kind of came back in this second half. He definitely, Joel, played better in the second half than he did in the first. He's just more settled. We talked about the way he kind of rushed things with the ball sailed on him. You talked about he, he was off balance. Uh, Murray slides for four or five more. But I, I think overall, what you brought up, that word balance. Yeah was there in the second half it wasn't really there in the first half well, he was we, never settled we saw him hopping anytime you see a quarterback hopping in the pocket they're not going to be balanced if they're if they're moving with their feet and their back foot is under themselves that's what if i ever teach a quarterback joel their back foot has got to move under themselves and that's what essentially moves you their back foot moves first and he's been much better in the second half and because of that he's thrown more accurately there's josh heifel who's so loved here in Norman, it's real similar. You and I talked about it yesterday at practice, like Major Applewhite yeah, in Texas. Yeah, very similar. Here's Murray, he just has to hang on to the football. That's all that they want right now is security. Minute 16 in counting. As the clock continues to roll, Air Force out of timeouts. Well, and even if Air Force gets this ball back, it's going to be inside of, well, about, you know, 30 seconds about right in there. After this play, maybe even all the way down yeah, inside way, of that, way inside. Because of the punt. Yep. So Oklahoma actually can take it all the way down, still utilize their final timeout, stop the clock with a second, and I'm talking about a, play, a second left on the play clock. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. And then run third down, keep the ball on the ground, and still have a full well, play clock it, to take it down. And, then, and that should... That should do it on third down now with 34 seconds. Right. All you got to do is run a play in the 40 yeah. second clock. You know, that'll run out the clock. So, oh, you get ready to go on the road. But you brought up finding themselves. Yeah. And both Oklahoma and Texas have played better than 12 first year freshmen. So they're still trying to find out identities, personalities of the team. And, and Bob Stoops told us earlier this week, he said it's real early for this team. It, well, it's early for this team. Plus, I think that. This Air Force team doesn't give you a great standard if you're Oklahoma. You don't know that much of it. I mean, it's not a shock to me that this is a close game at 27-24 because of the style that Air Force plays. So OU, they've spent so much time getting ready for Air Force and the tangible things that they can actually take from this game and apply them next week or down the road, almost zero. Tough. Almost Did zero. Did you never see this kind of so team. different. They're so different. So. Bob Stoops is going to get his ball club ready, and DeMarco Murray will be leading his senior, Sooners out to Cincinnati. But is his look, his lean, everything about his game look like Adrian Peterson? Well, oh, Adrian yeah. was a little bit fiercer, well, uh, you know, but as I a mean, runner. He's bulked up. DeMarco's he, he got the guns up. now. Yeah. He uh, he's a much stronger up. tailback, and hopefully he can stay healthy because that's the only thing that's held him back here. He's missing games. Take a knee, and it is official now. And it's just, well... Personal foul. <laughs> Didn't take that one. Ball start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, they still have to take well, a snap. My man Tyler Evans. He's got to go over to his center, Ben Hayburn, and say, "Why didn't you snap the ball? That was that was on one." Landry even took a knee. Ben Hayburn didn't snap the ball, so. He's from Stratford, Missouri. I wonder if that's close to Excelsior Springs, Missouri. And a knee has been taken, and it is official. It's all over in Norman, Oklahoma. A 3-0 record for the Oklahoma Sooners, but some anxious moments after they took a 27-10 lead because there is absolutely, and it's good to know, that the Falcons from the Air Force Academy have no quit at all. Well, you see the coaches exchanging a handshake there at midfield and Troy Calhoun has got himself a very good football team from the Air Force Academy and Joel on a personal note my dad being a veteran of the Vietnam War and serving his country I just want to thank all of you who have watched our program yes. on the Armed Forces Network around the world and we, we wish you all the safety 
and you're in our thoughts and prayers every night. These kids from Air Force will be serving our country, not only now, but after they're done. And it's definitely a good, good scene to see everybody shaking hands down there. Yeah, we thank everybody on AFN today for protecting our freedom so we can enjoy this afternoon in Norman, Oklahoma. Downstairs, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. Coach, uh, you said this is going to be a tough team to prepare for due to that option. you got to also be pleased. You know, your defense held tough there in the second half, but also the offense got going in the second half. Well, the offense really key to eat up time, and, and, and the few drives that they have were big. And defensively, we weren't near as good in the second half as we were in the first. And uh, they did a nice job executing. I, I knew they would. They're, they're, uh, they do an excellent job, Coach Calhoun and his staff. And, and uh, their players play hard, and they're, they're really, uh, technique-wise, what they do is good. You got a lot of respect for this Air Force program. Before the game, you got on the Jumbotron and encouraged the Sooner fans to give them an ovation when they took the field. That's a lot of respect right there. Oh, absolutely. Um, these young men are really special. When, when they have to, to do what they have to do beyond playing ball and going to school is uh, you have to appreciate their commitment, their sacrifices, and all of the servicemen across the country. So we're proud to play them. I knew it would be tough. They're a tough bunch, and uh, we're proud of them. All right, Coach, congratulations on the win. Joel? All right, thanks, Jim. Yeah, the respect that we all have for the Falcons of the Air Force Academy. And as Bob Stoops just said, what they do yeah. besides the academics and everything else involved in being a part of that program, besides football well like I said they're a very good football team they're going to do a heck of a job in the Mountain West Conference this year but Oklahoma continuing to get ready for that Big 12 uh, schedule and that showdown with Texas just a couple of weeks away so we'll get ready for that showdown you're talking about the Sooners though taking on Cincinnati up in Cincinnati and thanks to everybody uh, for enjoying our broadcast as much as we did hopefully today on American Forces Network around the world don't forget Cougars Bruins that's a little bit later. Coming up next, Kentucky and Akron. For Joel Platt, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. What a game. Oklahoma prevails just barely 27-24. to You've been watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips Televisions. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.